I don't know if it'll show on video just how red that sun is, but there's a lot of smoke in the air. And we got up at the crack of stupid o'clock to get on the road. And we are on our way to the Alberta Railway Museum in Edmonton, Alberta. So you'll notice one uh, important uh, member is missing. There's no Mabel with us today, and that's because the Alberta Railway Museum is not a dog-friendly facility, which I totally understand. So Mabel is going to stay at home, and because it's about a three-and-a-half-hour drive each way, that means we're doing it a little bit different than normal. We're not gonna be seeing a whole lot along the way, but instead the focus is really gonna be on, we gotta get there, uh, experience the museum, and then get home. So it's a really a bit of a different Dan O'Can road trip. Usually we're more about uh, you know, the journey than the destination, but today it's all about the destination. quick stop here in Airdrie to fuel up the tank and to buy some sunscreen because we both forgot to bring hats today so we are going to bake out here. It's supposed to be quite hot today. Well, we're getting close. There's only about three kilometers to go and we're seeing train tracks. That's a good sign. So we're only two kilometers away from the uh, railway museum, according to the uh, ways. And uh, yeah, it's funny. It's like we're out in the middle of the country here. There's been no signs whatsoever. Uh, if you didn't know this was here, you would never find it. So that's kind of interesting. Well, there's some flags here about the spot where it's telling us to turn, so we must be getting close. This must be the place. Indeed. Old uh, CPCN. Instruction car. Oh, good start, good start. Now, I'll be honest, having been to some very large railway museums like the uh, Illinois Railway Museum up in Union, uh, Union, Illinois, obviously, um, I don't have high expectations for the Alberta Railway Museum, but I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised. So the museum is only open on weekends from the Victoria Day holiday in May through Labor Day in September and that's why we've chosen today to make the drive up here as this is their last weekend of operation for the 2022 season. So let's go see what we can find. So we <laughs> just just got here and timed it right. They were just starting to load the uh, the train, so definitely had to get on board with that. On board, no yeah. pun intended. I know. She asked, "Do we want tickets for the train ride?" Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Right? It's a train museum. Just trying to decide what era we think the train cars from. We're gonna guess the 50s, but we'll probably find out at some point here. So just checking out our tickets, Northern Alberta Railways. And I wonder if these were, well, I know these were actual stations and whatnot, but I wonder if this is like an actual timetable or... Very cool looking tickets though.
starting to move. Was that uh, in case, just like on an airline, right? I have to give you guys some emergency procedures. If we have to stop suddenly, if there's in the event of an emergency, we will stop. And you'll follow me off the train. You like uh, from the 1920s till 1980, it operated independently. And then in 1980, it was acquired by CM. Standing here beside locomotive, what is it, number 73. 73, the last surviving locomotive from the Northern Alberta Railway, at least of the steam era. 280 consolidation style, and I just want to point out the size of these drive wheels. I stand six feet tall, and I'm standing beside them here. And yes, they're a little bit raised above me, but just the scope of steam engines is always remarkable, or the scale of them is remarkable to consider. <laughs> uh -huh. Thought you were going to try and jump down and scare me. I thought about it. <laughs> How to get kicked out of the railway museum in five minutes or less. Start jumping out of the cupola. <laughs> <laughs> ever played train simulator this is very familiar to you I personally never have but uh, you know whatever I'd like to I just don't have a computer powerful enough to run any games anymore
quite the uh, steep approach into that one. But we managed without incident. 1930 Hart Par tractor. 32.2 horsepower at the uh, draw bar according to the Nebraska tests. And a crane car, Canadian Northern. Hose cart here. I always said someday if I had unlimited funds and I was building my own little fire museum, I would have to have one of these just to, uh, you know, complete the collection. Even though I'm more of a 50s, 60s kind of uh, fire truck guy, still pretty cool. Out of everything we've seen at the uh, museum so far, I think this is probably my favorite artifact. Check it out. A CRT television. Woohoo! I love it. Now you'll remember I did a video on how a grain elevator operates out at the uh, Butsy grain elevator. This diagram here gives a much better look than uh, I could possibly hope to describe, but uh, if you get a chance, check out the little thingy up in the card there and uh, check out that video as well. It's one of our more popular, uh, popular videos for sure. And we thought these uh, poster boards had a familiar look and you can see it was taken from Jim Pearson's Vanishing Sentinel book. Jim Pearson, we've mentioned him on the uh, channel more than a few times, made an appearance in a couple of our videos as well. So still missed, but his work continues to live on here uh, several years after his, uh, after his passing. Mm, it has that distinct train car odor. I was going to say, I don't mean that in a negative way. So the uh, little interpretive sign at the entrance said you could actually charter this car up until about 2003 for a group of uh, about 8 to 12 of your, your best friends and uh, take a tour on it through the Agawa Canyon, which... Um, I just want to say if there's any of my friends out there who want to charter a private uh, train car and take a tour, I think we would be really on board with joining in uh, with you on that. And especially if you're paying to charter, that would really help. Yeah, especially when here's the prices. Oh, prices. Okay, hang on. Let's check this out. And speaking of those prices, eight persons. One day canyon, regular tour, $2,500. Which I guess if you're splitting it eight ways, isn't that bad? $2,900 if you want to do the fall tour uh, rate, which was from September 12th to October 18th of 2003. So you know I've got to try out. Oh my God, these are comfortable. Like, I mean, more comfy than the seats on the other train. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, they're you know for being a stiff back chair. Yeah, this is uh, this would be all right. I could have handled this, you know, back in two thousand three, chartering something like this again with eight friends who are willing to cough up the money to make it happen. So, come through from the parlor car. It had sleeping accommodations for one person, which would be the train car attendant. But then you come through into your private dining car, also configured for seating of 12. Really nice. <laughs> very, very nice.
Okay, yeah. The kitchen. For your private chef. And I don't know if it showed on the video, but uh, it mentioned on the menu that you had to select the same meal for all members of your party, so. I can imagine some fights starting. Yeah. But I don't want eggs benedict. <laughs> and uh, you can tell in operation up to 2003, a few modern touches. Microwave. Uh, very nice. Uh, I assume that's an oven down there. Light kind of got in my way, but cooktop that would be quite at home in an RV. Mm-hmm. So if you needed your porter, you would just ring your bell. That would ring here. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. Step back into the next car. A little, uh, little less luxurious. Yeah, this looks like it would be a great resource for those exploring Northern Alberta. It's the Northern Alberta Railways station names and their origins and what they were named after or who they were named after. Very cool, very cool. And this will probably not come through on the video very well because of the glary glass. Glary Glass, I think I went to school with him. Uh, no, that was Gary Glass. Anyway, uh, it's Diorama Rama. I, yeah, I always wanted to be into model railways and my dad and I built a few little HO layouts in the basement and I had an N gauge layout at one point, and this is what it would always look like in my dreams. The reality was always very, very different. Bit of a later caboose, this one from 1953. We can pop in and compare that to the earlier one we saw. And classic railway heating. Stand close to it and you melt. Get a little bit further away and you freeze. And I shot some footage of these cars earlier when we were on the, uh, on the train. But now we get a closer look and can climb inside a few of them. Notice. Throwing of smoking or burning material from this unit is prohibited. I'm thinking it's probably not a good idea even from other units. And my favorite thing, steps that do not have a do not enter sign. So we're checking out the upper level of the flanger car used for removing small amounts of snow from between the rails. So I talked about the flanger. There is the actual blade that was used for removing the snow. Last passenger train from Edmonton to Dawson Creek on the Northern Alberta Railway, May 31, 1974, hauled by this very same diesel electric locomotive. And there she sits today. So this car has been used a couple times in different movies and productions. The movie The Gunfighters in 1987, Silence of the North from 1979, and whoops, another emergency alert just came through. Exterior repainted in 96 for an episode of Jake and the Kid that was filmed here in 1996. So let's take a look at it, I guess. Very pretty. I like the colors. Mm-hmm. 
Very nice car. Handle carefully, station clock. This side up. Hmm, interesting. What's so sad? Standing or riding is prohibited. Hmm. I think you're standing in it. That sounds like uh, one of those, uh, what was it, for palm olive or whatever? Where it was like, you know, the, with the fingers in the bowl and it's like, you're soaking in it. It's like, you're standing in it. <laughs> I don't know, okay, that joke didn't fly. The men's smoking and washroom and recreation room. We're playing cards. Comfortable. I assume they're comfortable bench seats. Spots for washing up. And of course, your railway toilet. Dental sink. That would be a cuspidor if I've got my terminology correct. used for drinking cups and this was the water cooler so when you stood around with your buddies having water cooler talk it was literally at the water cooler here's all the light switches porter's closet i wonder oh boy Ooh. not quite al capone's vaults but you have to be of a certain age to get that reference. Oh, yeah. That's just cool. Uh-huh. It's kind of in a neat state of Those arrested decay. Taped over little light sconces. I think you're right. Wow. This is beautiful. What an amazing... Like I said, it's just the state of it is perfect. It's got a real, <laughs> a real patina to it that... A restor a restored a restored car would not have. So here's an example of one of the berths that's been pulled down from the wall to form sleeping accommodation. Much smaller. The CN timeline was designed and constructed for CN's pavilion at Expo 86, then donated to the U of A, who then turned and donated it to the ARM in 1996. And you gotta actually turn the little timer there. And it's okay, we're allowed to do that. There's instructions. And then that powers everything up and turns on the displays. It sounds very retro. It's like... Mm, yeah. Must be fans, I guess, to keep it cool. I guess. Okay, and then when we come back... Oh, I see. There's more of it. Yeah, there's more displays cool so we can actually get you the sound of it powering up because it's really cool we're about to be transported back to 1986 here we go Whoa. okay that's really cool. oh i love it railways can be of no use in the country agricultural products are too heavy or too bulky to transport Put that right up there with my technology predictions from the early 90s that said, A, there is no way anyone needs the power of a 486 CPU, and B, the internet to the 90s will be what CB radio was to the 70s. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's a bit of a fad. And eventually it will go back into the hands of the few people who actually need it. 
well, you could spend the entire day here just reading all the displays and looking at all the different photographs just in this section alone. To remove tools, break glass. Okay, and what exactly am I breaking the glass with to get the tools if I have to have a tool to break the glass? Like, I'm not going to use my head as hard as it may be. Nineteen sixty-four. <laughs> Sackville, Probert, Truro, Alton, Milford. Huh. Number nine thousand getting ready for the one o'clock run. So a couple different train stations located along uh, the boardwalk here. This one was located in PV and it has a cargo area on one side and on the other side here is the area where the passengers would have waited with a little wood burning stove and a little bench. And just down the boardwalk here, we have a flag stop station that was from the town or probably a village given how small their station was of Opal. Flag stops were places along the train line where the train would only stop if it was flagged down and there were passengers waiting. And again, very basic accommodations wooden benches, telephone for communication purposes, and wood burning stove to try and keep you at least a little bit warm in the summer. And I think we timed that just about perfect. The battery on the camera is flashing red, so I managed to shoot a lot more footage than I expected. We got a lucky horseshoe here over the door, and it's lucky for us you came along to enjoy the uh, trip here to the Alberta Railway Museum with us. Certainly not as big as the ones that we've seen in Illinois or the B&O Railway Museum in Baltimore, but I have to admit, as an Albertan, I had no idea just how much of a collection and uh, facility they had running here. So I, you know, I came in, I said I had low expectations. I don't have high expectations for the Alberta Railway Museum, but I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised. Well, I was pleasantly surprised. There was a lot more here than I anticipated. I think we've spent probably the better part of over two hours wandering around, checking things out. Well worth the price of admission. Closed now for the 2022 season, but of course they will be running again come May of 2023. And, uh, if you're in the area northeast of Edmonton, you really should check it out. So thank you for watching.